This is a 980 CKNW podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Food Glorious Food. Thanks for joining us on our CKNW podcast. This is podcast number 97. I'm Zara Lanny. And I'm Richard Wallach. We have got a lot of information today about food in and around the city of Vancouver with wine and beverage reviews just for good measure. Now remember to follow us on social media. I'm on Instagram at Zara.Alani and Twitter at Zara Alani. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Van Foodster. Yeah, we're just going to shift gears now and um, uh, talk about chef and author Ernest Kwanzaa. Uh, he wrote a book called A Diabetic's Journey. Uh, we invited chef and author uh, Kwanzaa to come into the studios and talk to us about his personal journey with diabetes. Ernest himself was able to create a lifestyle to help ease his symptoms through cooking and um, being just aware of his food intake. He wrote a book outlining this journey and what worked for him. Ernest Kwanzaa now joins me live at the CKNW studios as we talk about his book, Diabetics Journey, How Type 2 Diabetes Can Be Reversed and Cured. Ernest, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me. So let's start off with, um, tell me about your background as a chef. Well, I've been a chef for about 25 years. That includes um, working as a pastry chef. So I've done the restaurants, the hotels, and the retirement homes. And how did you get into that? Have you studied for being a pastry chef? or? Yeah, before I became a chef, I went to Vancouver Community College and took the uh, culinary arts for one year. A lot of amazing chefs have come out of there. Exactly, and it's an excellent program, and I absolutely love food and cooking. Uh, and that's why we're on this show. Now, you also, after that, were diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes. So let's talk about how you focused on foods that can control your blood sugar. So in 2009, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes because I was just not taking very good care of myself. I was eating too much sugar, having cookies and sweets and cola drinks and all this other stuff, and eventually it overwhelmed my body, and I was diagnosed with diabetic. And I struggled with it for two years. And then one day I went to my doctor's office and asked them and asked him, Dr. Robinson, can I reverse my diabetes? And he says, yes. I said, but why didn't you tell me two years ago when you diagnosed me? He said, well, because people don't listen. So he told me what to do. I went home, spent two weeks doing research, and came out with a formula, and I eventually refined it. And when I tested it on myself, within 20 days, my energy level went up. My doctor called me for more blood tests and called me back to the office and told me that your diabetes is gone. Okay, so you said 20 days, your energy had really increased and changes were made. Now, amazing to hear from your doctor that he feels it's been managed and reversed. So tell us what worked for you as far as diet and nutrition. What worked for me was I took out sugar out of my diet completely. And what that means is that include uh, sweetened juices, beverages with sugar. That's hard to do. It is hard to do. And in the process of doing this, I noticed that what really it comes down to is discipline. The ability to restrict yourself from uh, food products that is causing the diabetes. And so other than the sugary drinks, were there any specific foods that you avoided? Uh, Food, I avoided excessive carbohydrates. So for instance, instead of white rice, I would eat brown rice. Instead of white pasta, I would eat um, kamut pasta, which is very high in protein. But everything else remained the same. Fruits, um, vegetables, meats, all sorts of, you know, meats of all kinds were all good for me. So I, I, I ate those things. And it all helped because it prevented my body from um, creating more sugar into, into the food that I eat. Okay. And now, were you uh, able to or were you supposed to also add into that an exercise regime? I added, so mis- mi- mostly I did food, I did healthy eating, exercise, those so two. So really about management. Exactly. And so what happened at once, what actually happens to diabetes is that when you become type, of, type 2 diabetes, a diabetic, what happens is this excess sugar build up in the body. And that excess sugar finds its way into your bloodstream where it converts into fat. Once it converts into fat, it coats your red blood cells. 
preventing them from absorbing sugar and transporting the sugar into your muscles to be used for energy. That is what diabetes, type 2 diabetes is. And so to reverse that, you have to burn off that sugar in your body and in your bloodstream. And once that happens, your red blood cells beginning to absorb sugar again and transport it into your muscles to be used as energy, and your body returns to insulin-sensitive diabetes is gone. Okay. So that's what I learned. And now before you went to the doctor, you, you didn't know that it could be reversed. Now, doctors say there's no cure, but it can be reversed and managed with proper care. That is correct. And so you were able to put that into effect. But let's track back a bit. You were saying you lived with this for two years before you came up with your, the program that worked for you. How was it living with diabetes? How was it? It was very interesting because all my, when I became a diabetic, I adopted the same mentality, which is that I have to manage this with drugs because that's the information that is often passed on to us. Until I took the step and went to my doctor and asked him, he said, no, no, you can actually reverse it because this is caused by lifestyle choices. And so once I was able to put together a formula that worked, I said to him, Dr. Robinson, I need to go out there and teach this to other diabetics and help them because they don't know what is going on with them and they are managing their diabetes. So type 2 diabetes, obesity, and prediabetes all follow the same. They're pretty much the same thing. If you eat healthy and exercise, they will go away. Doctors have been telling us this for years, right? Eat healthy and exercise. Exactly. So what uh, motivated you to write this book? The pep, the, what motivated me the most was that I wanted people to know. So first of all, most books on diabetes, obesity, and prediabetes are usually recipe books. They don't tell a story. They don't tell you the underlying cause of your condition. So what motivated me to write the book is to educate people. Information is power. To educate them and to help them understand what is going on inside their bodies and what, what changes they need to make in order for them to regain their health back. There's a, a reason why. When people become diabetic, it is not the diabetes that gives them heart attack or stroke. It is a sugar buildup inside the body that eventually attacks the nerves that leads to leg, uh, limb amputation. It is the same sugar that causes stroke and the heart attack. Doctors now are beginning to admit this because it's becoming common knowledge now. So everything in moderation, really. Um, now, I'm looking at your book right now, and you've also got a website to help people direct them through discovering diabetes and how they can help themselves. Tell us about your website. So the website offered two, uh, two services. Well, actually, three. First, the book can be ordered through the website. And secondly, uh, we have a program that helps people to lose weight or reverse their prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. So it's a complete website for anybody who is interested in losing, losing weight or uh, reversing their diabetes and g regaining their health back. The most important thing is that the program on the website, when I first reversed my diabetes, a WebMD from the United States did an article about me. And people who are familiar with WebMD, is they, pr they are the largest provider of healthcare information to doctors and to healthcare professionals worldwide. So whatever that they publish on their website, it is for doctors and healthcare workers. That means it's 100% accurate. So they did a story on me, and they posted it on their website. So what that means is the program that I have on my website has been peer-reviewed, peer meaning other researchers in the same field have reviewed it okay. and approve of it. That is, that is very impressive and, and very supportive, very supportive of your claims and your journey. So I am so glad uh, that you have found a way to manage this and reverse this. As a chef, tell us what you use in your cooking now um, and, and some of the foods that you frequently use in your cooking for health benefits. What I use in my cooking is mostly I cook the same way like I did, did in the past with some moderations. For, so for instance, in the past, I didn't eat a lot of vegetables. Now I do. And so, for instance, if I'm making a stir-fried vegetable, this is one of my favorites. If I'm making stir-fried vegetables, I will divide the vegetables into half. I will stir-fry half of it and then take the other half and toss it with the cooked vegetables so the flavor is mixed into the raw vegetables. So I will eat a combination of raw and cooked vegetables. Oh, that's interesting. Now, the reason is the World Health Organization a couple of years ago uh, released um, an article in which they said they wanted people to eat three cups of uncooked vegetables a day. 
well, nobody wants to eat raw vegetables anymore. Mm-hmm. And so the trick that I came out with is you cook your food, you stir fry vegetables, and then you mix it with the uncooked vegetables. So it, so it all tastes the same. And so it makes it easier for people to eat. Okay, that's a great trick. Now, for a lot of our listeners, they are foodies and they go to restaurants quite a bit. Now, that can add up. So what are your best tips for ordering in a restaurant to stay healthy? Stay healthy. Eat fresh. This, I'm going to share people. I'm going to share a little secret with people. When you go to a restaurant, try to go around 7 or 8 o'clock when they've used up all the leftovers that now they have to use the fresh items. And that's when you get the most fresh foods. And try to eat less carbohydrates. And the food should be mostly vegetables and very high in protein. Okay, these are all really great tips. And you've got more information on your website and on your book that uh, we will be giving away to some lucky listeners. We'll have more details on that coming up. Ernest, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate all your time and your knowledge. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Be sure to check out Ernest's website. Its title is justfordiabetics.com. So check that out. And also, if you are interested in knowing more about Ernest's journey through diabetes, we have giveaways for his book. We've got two giveaways for two lucky listeners. Check out our Twitter feeds for contest details. I'm at Zara Alani now. That's Z-A-H-R-A Alani. And I'm on Fan Foodster on Twitter. So just watch our Twitter feeds over the next week. So Zara and mine... And you will have a chance to win one of two copies of this book. And that contest will run until April 17th.